Today's UHF digital television transmitters are made up of many different systems that work together in order to create and transmit the over-the-air DTV signal that viewers at home can watch. This series of videos will provide you with an overview of these different systems and how they relate to each other. Part 1 covers the transport stream, the digital exciter, and the intermediate power amplifiers. Part 2 will look at the RF drive to the IoT, as well as the IoT and its cooling and high voltage systems. Part 3 will begin at the output of the IoT and the initial filtering of the high power RF signal and the transmission line used to carry it. Part 4 starts at the mask filter and goes on through RF switching and combining, as well as the antenna. At the end of this series, you will have a basic understanding of what it takes to broadcast a digital signal over the air. The digital exciter creates the RF signal that is to be broadcast. It takes the transport stream and converts it into the required ATSC RF signal called 8VSB. To do this, at least two signals are required. The first is a transport stream containing all the programs to be broadcast, and second, a 10 MHz reference that is locked to the GPS signal. The digital exciter receives the transport stream in either the ASI or SMPTE 310 format. These signals come from an encoding system consisting of an encoder, bottom unit, a multiplexer, top unit, and if needed, a format converter seen here in the middle. The digital exciter is housed in the exciter cabinet along with the transmitter GUI control panel. Behind the front panel are the different modules that perform all the functions required to convert the transport stream into the 8 VSB RF signal. As you can see, this exciter contains a UHF preamplifier, which on some exciters is external, but on this one is contained within the exciter. This is the rear of the exciter cabinet, showing the internal wiring. Note the RF switch, which is used to select between two exciters. And here are the cables going to the connector panel at the top of the cabinet. This is the RF output that goes to the HPA or high power amplifier. This is the source of the 10 MHz reference signal a GPS master oscillator, which is connected to a special GPS antenna mounted on the roof of the transmitter building. The Intermediate Power Amplifier, or IPA, is made up of a number of RF amplifiers which increases the RF output of the exciter to the level required by the IoT. The first component is an RF switch used to kill the RF signal to the IoT when testing the transmitter. Next is a single amplifier used to drive a splitter where the RF signal is distributed to the inputs of several more amplifiers. The output of these amplifiers are added together in a combiner to produce a much larger RF signal. The output of these amplifiers is monitored here. The IPAs are mounted on a column that has a fan mounted at the top to blow air past them for cooling.
An IoT, or inductive output tube, is at the very heart of a high-power UHF television transmitter. This is the device that amplifies the output of the exciter to the very high levels required for broadcasting. Here you can see the IoT as it arrives from the factory. And here it is after it's been dressed and installed into the transmitter, ready for operation. The output of the IPAs goes here, where it is fed into the input cavity of the IoT. The IoT uses several tuned cavities. This is the input cavity. And below it is the first output cavity. This is the second output cavity. And above that is the transmission line that accepts the RF output of the tube. The IoT requires both a high voltage power supply and cooling in order to operate correctly. High voltage is required for operating the IoT amplifier. It all starts with the 480 volt 3 phase, which comes from the power company. After it passes through the initial circuit breakers, it enters the transmitter room and goes on to the transmitter itself. From there, it is routed to the high voltage power supply and then back to the tube. The circuit breakers used are very large, ranging in size from 200 to well over 800 amps. This is what's called the step start relay system. These two contactors supply the 480 volts to the high voltage power supply. During the first few seconds, the power is routed through these resistors to limit the amount of current. After a few seconds, full power is supplied to the high voltage power supply here. Inside are the connections to the 480 volt three phase those connections are located at the top of the high voltage power supply, while below is the high voltage section. Back at the transmitter cabinet, the high voltage is routed to the power supplies that feed the tube, bias and heater voltages. And here's the crowbar circuit which is used to remove the high voltage to prevent damage to the IoT. All of the voltages for the IoT are routed to the input cavity, where there is a junction box that accepts the connections. Here you can see a view looking down inside the input cavity. The cooling system is a very important part of the transmitter. It removes the heat generated by the high voltages and output powers of the IoT itself. It starts at the reservoir, where the coolant is stored before it is pumped out. A pipe connects the reservoir to an electric pump that pushes the coolant through the entire system. Here you can see an actual reservoir connected to the two pumps below. One is always on standby. The two water pumps are used alternately to ensure that one is always working. After this is a pressure gauge and pressure switch which informs the transmitter if the coolant stops and will turn off the transmitter if need be. After the pressure switch at gauge, 
the pipes are routed down below to the actual transmitter. Once in the transmitter room, the pipes distribute the coolant to the IoT and to the water column station load. Here you can see the pipes coming down from above. Once in the transmitter itself, the temperature and flow rate of the coolant are monitored. Here you can see the flow gauge. The water connections to the IoT are at the bottom. After the coolant has been warmed by the transmitter, it is returned to the cooling system above. Here is the radiator with fans mounted above that sends air past the radiator to cool the coolant. Here you can see the pipes passing through the radiator fins. Once the water has been cooled, it passes on to the reservoir where it waits to be pumped out again. This completes the entire circuit.